Hello everybody and welcome. I assume you clicked on this video to learn how to solo Templar, so let's waste no time and get started. Timestamps from the video player. This can be done on every class and we will get to what each class should run individually, but first let's go over armor. Every class should have four pieces of Vogue armor and slot in an anti-oracle mod into each of them. Without this mod, this encounter can take twice as long. This mod says that when you kill an oracle, you gain super energy, and you gain a lot of super energy, probably two-fifths of your super with one oracle break. You should also run double void resistance, since the boss and minotaurs do void damage, and they do a lot of it. The next two mods are personal choice. I ran LFR ammo finder for ammo, obviously, and sniper rifle holster, so I didn't have to reload my sniper, but it doesn't really matter. I'm also running one seasonal mod, which is solo operative. This is a 15% damage buff when you're solo, but again, it's seasonal, so other seasons there might be something different. If you want high energy fire and thus need a way to get charged with light, charge harvester is an easy way to do that on all classes. You essentially just get kills. Now on to weapons, and again, another thing every class should have is a sniper with six plus rounds in it. It takes two sniper shots to break an oracle, and since there are three oracles per phase, you need six shots, welcome to math class. From this point on, weapons depend on your class and how you want to do damage. The max damage on this boss is tractor cannon double slug. It's most viable with Titan, since with T-Crash you have to get close anyways, but it can get really dicey if you aren't confident, so I wouldn't recommend that. For almost every class, Wither Horde and LFR is the play. This gets good damage and allows you to do easy damage from far away. Your second slot can either be a sniper in it, or, after you shoot the oracles, a grenade launcher that you hot swap to. I'd recommend running a normal LFR like Storm Chaser with a perk like Frenzy, since you can't proc firing line over something like Cataclysm, since it's much harder to get all the shots in if something ends up going wrong. Now we're going to go to what you should run for each specific class. Again, this can be done on every class, and the difficulty doesn't really change between them. For Hunters, run Celestial Nighthawk with Marksman Golden Gun. Gambler's Dodge is recommended with Knife Trick and a Healing Grenade. The grenade is how you heal. The aspects don't really matter, but I ran On Your Mark and Knock Them Down. There are two fragments that are important, and that is Ember of Solace and Ember of Torches. These allow you to get Radiant by throwing your knives, and you keep Radiant longer. The other fragments literally do nothing, so run whatever you like. For Warlocks, you want to run Vortex Nova Bomb. Cataclysmic is often too slow and eats your shots. Run Healing Rift, Pocket Singularity, and a Vortex Grenade. For Aspects, run Child of the Old Gods and Feed the Void. Feed the Void is how you heal, and you can Chain Devour for minutes if done right. You have to get a grenade kill. All these fragments actually do something for this class, so I'd recommend running Echo of Undermining, Leeching, Reprisal, and Persistence. And for your exotic, run Apotheosis Veil. For Titans, you want to run T-Crash with Curious of the Falling Star and Storm Grenades. Nothing else really matters, but if you want, aspects are Touch of Thunder and Knockout, and fragments are Spark of Magnitude, Resistance, Shock, and maybe Spark of Recharge. Since Titans have no debuff or buff, running Charge Harvester and High Energy Fire is a good way to get a buff. And without the way, let's get started. The rotation of this encounter goes as follows. You listen to the Oracles, break the Oracles, cleanse if needed, Wait for your shield super, damage the boss, and repeat. One cycle isn't too hard, but the challenge is doing it multiple times in a row. So let's start. As I said, the first step is to listen to the oracles. You want to break the three oracles that spawn in order to get the max amount of super. There are two main places to read oracles from, which are here and here. These allow you to see four oracles, with the other two being read through sound. I guess you don't read the sound, but you know what I'm saying. As you know, each oracle makes a sound when it spawns, and each one has a unique sound. Some people memorize the sounds themselves, but you can actually just understand what order they come in. There are six oracles, so there are six sounds. They go from a lower pitch to a higher pitch in this order. L1 is the lowest, then R1, L2, then R2, L3, and R3 is the highest. For example, in this position, I heard a really low one, then I saw R3, then L1. From this, I knew the first one was R1. This allows you to not have to frantically run around the arena to visually confirm the order. Once all of them are red, you have to break all of them. This can be done using your sniper and your shield. Your shield's heavy bash can one-shot them, and the sniper can two-shot them. I would recommend, if you can, breaking the final one with your shield. To break the Templar shield, you have to get your shield super up. 
Breaking an Oracle and also killing adds with the shield grants super energy. So breaking the final one with the shield gives you more energy. Additionally, you have to hold the shield to build up the meter. So the more time you're holding the shield, the quicker you get to damage. If you don't shoot all the oracles or you shoot one in the wrong order, you get marked for negation. This doesn't matter since you can cleanse yourself. Normally you can only cleanse yourself three times in this pool before it disappears. However, you can cleanse yourself without removing this pool. This is because the cleanse hitbox is a square and the removal of the cleanse pool hitbox is a circle. So the corners of the square peek out slightly so you can cleanse yourself without removing the pool. I like to do it on this corner, but I'm pretty sure you can do it on all the corners. Now on to damage. You have to wait to get your super to break his shield, obviously, and in the meantime you have to identify where he is. When he's behind these pillars, you can see a particle effect that shows you if he is at one of these two locations, otherwise you can just see him pretty easily. You can't super him immediately and begin damage however, as he will try to trap you. Because of this, you have to break his shield from a distance, and once the ball hits him, immediately start light attacking. If your timing was right and your distance was right, you should be able to break out pretty easily. He can spawn at five different locations. You have middle, you have left pillar, you have a right pillar, and then you have middle right and middle left. You have to shoot these from a good distance, and so there are easier places to actually shoot them. So if he's here, shoot him from here. If he is here, shoot him from here. If he is here, shoot him from here. If he is here, shoot him from here. And if he is here, shoot him from here. This isn't 100% exactly where you have to shoot him. You can do it from other places. But these are pretty consistent. Additionally, when shooting him, don't aim directly at him. You want that ball to take a while to actually hit him. So aim off to the side the ball takes longer to reach him. After this, drop the shield and begin damaging. Now the damage is slightly different for each class. For hunters, you want to throw your knife, then wither horde, then super, then LFR for the rest. You can use gambler's dodge if an enemy is near you to get your melee back. For titans, throw your wither horde, then grenade, then T crash, then LFR. For warlocks, it's a little more complicated since your grenade both debuffs the boss and can be used for healing. Regardless, shoot your Wither Horde, then Grenade if you want to, then Super, then LFR. After the boss teleports away, pick up your shield again. During damage, always have an eye on the shield. Make sure you can pick it up easily. Sometimes when the timer is low, even if the shield hasn't disappeared yet, you will be unable to pick it up. So don't be too greedy with damage. After this, you rinse and repeat. The only difference is during the 6th Oracle phase, the boss will become enraged. You don't wipe, but now 5 Oracles spawn and Minotaur spawn. In this phase, I focused less on getting oracles in order, just made sure I stayed alive. I still got one oracle, however, even if it was wrong, because it still increases your super bar. It gets considerably harder during this phase, but if you keep going, you should kill the boss and it's done. That's the explanation done, but here are some tips that are going to be really helpful. The ads follow you around, so if you want some respite, go to the opposite side of the map quickly. There are two hiding places that I use during the Enrage phase. One is a last resort, but you'll never get hit, and the other one is more practical. You'll see normally after damage during Enrage, I go down here, but if I really need to not die, I run all the way over here. Ads almost never walk back here. The Fanax will kill you if you don't deal with them, so to kill them without hitting them, either run past them or towards them, and then away from them. This will cause them to explode. If multiple are in a group, it will chain explosions to each of them. Sometimes when you're dealing damage, the boss will attempt to teleport to where you are dealing damage. If you stop his teleport, he will detain you again. This is really hard to stop. Stopping him from teleporting is actually the challenge mode. So make sure you don't stand in those rings. Your super is the main source of damage. If you're taking too much damage, don't try to get in linear shots, just back away. Often, when trying to escape a tight situation, your first instinct is to light attack with the shield, but this can lead to accidentally attacking a fanatic and breaking your keyboard. So make sure you are 100% sure you won't auto-aim towards a group of enemies. During the first phase, you will already have your entire super. Because of this, I often get the order wrong in purpose just to start damage quicker. 
When cleansing yourself, I hold block, partially to negate incoming damage, and also to make it easier to aim my character's foot. That's it. If this was helpful, leave a like, and good luck. Bye!